What's up guys? Welcome back to another great episode of the Gruesome Garage. And we're here to show you our third Jeep that we own. Now we haven't really shown this in videos because to be honest, we're kind of embarrassed. All of our Jeeps are on eight lugs except for this one. And as much as we want to put it on eight lugs, it's our money maker, it's our plow boy. You don't see the plow on the Jeep obviously right now, but you can see the plow frame. We picked this Jeep up for a couple hundred bucks. It was having overheating issues, fixed the cooling issues, and threw a plow frame on it, got a plow, and this thing has been making money for us ever since. So since it's our money maker, we thought you know we'd give back a little. And this summer, our friend had this set of axles, Dana 30 front, Dana 44 rear, bolt into a Cherokee. The front has chromoly axle shafts, and the rear has a disc brake conversion on it. 500 bucks we couldn't pass that up especially since it has 456s in a locker in the rear we think this thing is going to be a little tractor when we start plowing so we thought why not make a video we'll show you the ins and the outs of swapping axles out it's super easy bolting in and out but they're used axles so we're going to have to go through them and make sure that everything is in tip top shape as you see i got the jack over here already so our plan is to start with the front end, that's more complicated, and time to pull everything out and get it basically bare and ready, except the only thing we're really not gonna take off are the, uh, the calipers. We're just gonna hang them up, unbolt all this stuff, and bolt in the new. She's out, boys and girls. And now it's time to extract the parts that we need off of here. We're gonna take the track bar, the lower control arms, and these sway bar links look, look a little worse for wear, so we're probably not gonna use those. But we are gonna take the brakes, or at least the discs and the calipers. So before we start taking this apart, let's check out Matt's progress over here on the new axle, or the new to us axle. Getting all the flaky, fun rust off. Got some grease off. And uh, we're just getting all the loose stuff. We're not going to paint the C's or the knuckles because they're covered in grease. So they're not going to rust. Um, yeah, knocking all the loose stuff off. Top's done. Got to flip it over do the bottom. And then we're going to give it a poor 15 bath. But, you know, 
They're a little questionable, but, but we really don't use this Jeep that much. So I'm not super worried. And this part is solid where the coil actually sits. And not worst case, we'll take it out and throw on. I'm not the shock patch, whatever. Nice thing is, too, is that these are aftermarket control arm brackets, so we're not going to have to worry about those snapping off like all the stock ones do. Yeah, at least those are nice and beefy. Bushings look good. The only thing this thing needs is a new home. Everything is now stripped off this worthless axle, and we can get it out of here, hopefully sell it for some beer. And all the important parts we took off. I started disassembling the steering and the track bar, and everything off of it to make sure that it's good for the next axle. The biggest problem is with the track bar, this heim on the one end, the bolt is now seized in here. I don't know, we put anti-seize on it, but it's been seized. So we gotta figure that out. Either we're gonna get another one of those or we're gonna weld this heim right into here and it should be no problem. But I'm gonna call the company and see how fast we can get one before we do some drastic measures. Another thing I was gonna do was clean up the steering and put the high or the tie rods back in. Ordered some new ones from Rusty's because we got the steering used with the axles. And guess what? They sent me two of the same offsets, both right hand thread, when I specifically said I want a left hand and a right hand one. So we're gonna call them and yell at them too. At least one thing is coming out correctly, and that's the front axle. We have it 415, it's first coat, and it's starting to look really good. So let's start cleaning up the paint, uh, the steering, and we can get that painted too. I'm thinking a nice gold. Cleaned up the rear brakes a bunch, and cleaned up a bunch of stuff for Matt to start his paint resto on. This plow Jeep, you know, we, we stopped washing it. Well, I mean, we didn't stop washing it, but we didn't really wash it last year, and it really took a toll on our things. We prepped the control arms, the track bar, and that's part of the steering. And it's gonna be gold, guys. You know it's in our gold. We think, especially with the gloss black of the axle, it'll look nice and pretty on there. Now, this got a whole thing of 415, and then we painted it with spray paint because 415 doesn't have a UV protection, and we wanna protect this as long as we can. Since I'm really waiting on parts, I'm going to start another project, and that's going to be the exhaust manifold. Now, we put an eBay special exhaust manifold in this beast, and to be honest, it didn't fit properly from the beginning. We actually got it from a friend for free, and you can see it down here. It's, uh, it, it's leaking, so we have the stock manifold, and we're going to do that. Also. Our injectors are leaking from the O-rings, so we're gonna swap out the O-rings in the injectors since there's nothing wrong with our injectors. Woo, look at that naked block. We got our beauty off. Took a little struggle because these bolts right here were all shot. So we basically had to cut this out of the exhaust system and then cut the bolts off. So we got to that and we got this beauty off. Now, the biggest issue with this thing is it is not flat. It does not sit flat whatsoever. And also, it is not designed like the stock manifold. You can't get to half of the bolts like you can with the stock manifold. So, Don't this buy an eBay piece of junk. Don't worry guys, we skipped the boringness of putting this back on. And now it's back on. You can see the stock manifold is there, the stock intake manifold, and new gasket of course, because the old one is always it's a one-time use deal so now that we're done with that and <clears throat> while we were at it we threw an oil pan on it or an oil pan gasket because that was sweating it's time to put the front axle back in got it over here on our cute little axle cart and we're gonna roll it on in bolt the control arms in and slowly start putting the suspension on it all right guys we threw the front axle in didn't really film any of it it's pretty straightforward same as taking it out. Everything went together nicely. We had a little problem with the rusty steering, actually gave us the wrong tie rod ends. So we threw the stock steering in for now, just because we're supposed to get a, you know, a foot of snow in a couple days. So that's done. And we just got to deal with our track bar conundrum here. So when we took it out, the bolt was uh, pretty seized in this heim. 
So we ended up cutting it, beating the crap out of it, and we figured we'll just get a new Heim, slap a new bolt in, be good to go. And Jeff called the company, and the company's Freedom Off-Road. I think he got it on eBay, right? Yeah, it was an eBay product, and it had good reviews, and I'm sure it's a great product, but I came to learn that their customer service is terrible. I called them up and asked them, with the part number, the problem, and asked them if I could get a replacement part, and the customer service told them I needed to email them a picture of their Jeep, of the Jeep, it in the Jeep, blah, 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 and I'm like, I have the part number, I told you, I just want the Heim, why can't we do this over the phone, and they're like, they basically pushed me away, and I said, screw it, we're doing it our own way. So we're just going to weld this Heim on instead of this bad boy, so pretty straightforward. We got to shorten this a little bit, weld this missile or weld the uh, threaded insert in, and we'll be uh, good to go. It seems like this Jeep just keeps on fighting us, because as I was putting it together, my brother had the key on, so the steering wheel wouldn't lock, and it must have turned on the fuel filter or the fuel line, and this guy <laughs> started spraying out a little. If you see right here on the hose, I cut it already or the line, the hard line. It must have been rubbing somewhere, and there was that little bracket that bolts it to the intake manifold. I'm assuming that's what it rubbed on, and there was a little pinhole spraying gas into the shock tower. So I decided to cut it off. We need this thing ready soon, and we're gonna do a quick fixer now, soft line up to the fuel rail, and while I'm at it, I'm going to go find some O-rings because they haven't come in yet either. With a quick trip to the hardware store for some hose clamps and fuel line and of course some candy. And another quick trip to the auto parts store for some O-rings. We are ready to start really finishing up and getting this thing running again. So let's eat some snacks. Replumb the fuel lines and the injectors. And maybe Matt can put an exhaust back on it. Thankfully, after figuring out all the stupid things, everything went back together super smooth in the engine compartment. Got the O-rings all serviced in the injectors. We, of course, ran into yet another problem. Trying to get the whole front end put back together and back on tires, we realized that our track bar bracket is missing the whole front. As, as you guys can see, we made a new one. So we're gonna burn that on. If you see this cute little rod right here, I made myself a new flag nut. Cause the old ones are always garbage. And this is a bigger nut anyway, or a bolt anyway. And you can see the solution on the other side. It's just now a beautiful Heim. Well, we turned her on and she had a terrible exhaust leak. So we figured out that it was the collectors down here where the two pre-cats are. And I tightened them up, turned it on, still was leaking. I saw one of them had a little gap in it. I pushed it over and it popped up and then the bolts were loose. So I tightened them up, turned it on, still leaking. Tightened them up, turned it on, heard a little bit more, shut it off, let it cool, tightened it up, and now it sounds great. So we're done with this chapter. We can close up the hood. And not only did we get to that, but we finished up the track bar. And man, does that look good. Looks like it belongs there. So does that Heim. <laughs> Since we're finished with the front, tomorrow we're gonna pull this thing up and we're gonna start yanking out the back. We just gotta throw a quick set of paint on this since it just has pour 15. And this thing is ready to slide into the rear. So before we tackle the rear end, I slapped the, uh, the muffler together real quick. Nothing fancy. Just a nice little Super 10, whatever they call them, and the exit there. So, muffler's done. Engine's good. Let's rip that rear axle. Out with the old. Jeff threw the new leaf springs in. And it's time for in with the new. So we threw the brakes on. New brake lines. All new lines. We're using the old block and uh, the old dangler. So, let's put it in. 
Jeff just did something very important. He hooked up the breather for our front axle. So we don't suck up all the uh, nice salt and snow and everything fun. We got the rear axle in. Sorry, we didn't really film anything. We are under the gun here. We're rushing. We get snow tomorrow. So that's in. It went together pretty smoothly. The uh, stock Cherokee e-brake cables don't really work with the um, Terraflex disc brake e-brake. So we're gonna have to rig something up, but we don't need an e-brake right now. So rear end is in, front end is in. We're gonna bleed the brakes, see how this baby is. She's back on all fours and we took her for a test drive and she's feeling great. Brakes feel a little mushy still, but they felt like that before. I really think it needs a new master, but we're ready to give this thing a proper first full send. Tune in next time. Maybe you'll see this thing plowing some powder. Maybe you'll see this hunk of junk maybe getting close to being done. See you next time.